started and I want to welcome everybody to um, this um, first of its kind presentation. Hopefully there'll be many more like it um, about Imagining Lyme. Um, so Imagining Lyme, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is um, visual exploration of Lyme's preserves. And the visual aspect that we are exploring is through photography. Um, we have been working with um, Joe Standart, who is a member on our board, to um, help us launch Imagining Lyme and uh, to help give us some tips that we can uh, disperse amongst the followers and kind of give everybody a, a seasonal challenge uh, or a quarterly challenge to work on um, and developing their photography skills. And it's really a, it's a challenge for anybody to, um, to pursue and, and it's quite fun. Uh, so we have had some amazing submissions come in and tonight we will be revealing who the um, winners are. There's gonna be first, second and third place. And, and the judges also chose three honorable mentions because we just had some really great photos. Uh, also, uh, we will be doing questions and answers at the end with Joe. I do ask if, if you can find the chat box, type your question into the chat box. I went ahead and sent a message there now. So if you can find it, you'll see a message from me to the group that says, welcome, please type your questions here in the chat box. If for some reason you can't find the chat box or you prefer to ask your question out loud, we can uh, possibly do that at the end, uh, depending on how many people we have. So um, I do wanna give a brief introduction of Joe Standart. I'm gonna read, Joe, if you don't mind, I'm gonna read directly from his land trust bio. Joe Standart has resided here in Lyme since 1987. He is a professional photographer and TV director. He specialized initially in landscapes for the National Park Service and then moved to New York to specialize in advertising. He retired from New York and now creates large scale public artworks dealing with social issues. The Lyme Land Trust does an amazing job conserving, protecting and making their land accessible and an enjoyable learning experience, says Joe. A recent poll shows that over 80% of Lyme's population list conservation as their top priority for the town. And that is not a coincidence. Those are Joe's sentiments about living in Lyme and conservation here locally. So without further ado, I would love to introduce to you, Mr. Joe Standart, and he is going to take it from here. Hello, hello, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to see all of these names uh, scrolling the top, across the top of my uh, screen. Uh, so welcome, thank you for coming. Uh, we have uh, some, some really fun stuff in store. Um, I, uh, Sue did such a great job introducing me, I don't think I have to do too much more. Uh, I, I started uh, uh, in photography in kind of a crazy way uh, with a political science program uh, that uh, took me to four different parts of the US where I lived and worked with uh, families in auto factories, uh, coal mines, uh, hog farms, and I just fell in love with photography during that process. So photography to me is just a turn on to life. Everything kind of comes alive. Um, I'm constantly looking at how light impacts or changes things. Buildings look entirely different, you know, even just a half an hour apart. Um, so I've just continually explored that, uh, uh, that really it's a passion and a love, and it's been a, a delight to have a career in this, uh, in this way. So um, what we've done when the COVID hit and the Lyme Land Trust um, has done such a spectacular job of making, it, making the trails and the preserves accessible that we tried to figure out what, how can we possibly um, continue to make it accessible, continue to get people excited about the landscape. And we came up with the idea of uh, this photo challenge. It's not a contest. It's just uh, um, encouraging everybody to come out and, uh, and explore and enjoy and bring their camera. It doesn't matter what camera. Um, an iPhone to a big, hefty, heavy 
uh, SLR, which I don't uh, use anymore, or <laughs> not, not uh, often anyway, because it's so heavy. Um, so uh, we set up the challenge and people responded uh, and people have been hitting the trails. I don't know, uh, I, my guess is most of you since you're here have been out there and seen full parking lots and uh, seen people really enjoying uh, the amazing landscape we have here in Lyme. And I've been, I have to admit that um, it's been a thrill and a new adventure for me also. Um, I've done a lot of hiking in different parts of the world uh, and just uh, in the last couple of years getting to know Lyme and its trails and they are spectacular um, in large part due to the hard work of many, many volunteers for the Land Trust and others. And talking about hard work, I do want to thank uh, the team that helped uh, put this uh, presentation on tonight. Uh, certainly you've met Sue Cope, but behind the scenes is Wendy Hill, Ann Rich, and uh, Melvin Woody. Uh, I want to really thank them. They are, uh, it's been a pleasure, a delight, and an easy thing to pull this off. So what I thought I would do um, is grab the screen, which might take a little bit of um, let's see. There we go. Um, so what I thought I would do is is uh, share with you what we've tried, what I as a photographer have tried to do uh, in presenting. Um, the trails, uh, the preserves to people, but how to really um, increase their abilities um, or just expand their vision, their way of uh, looking at the world, the way of, uh, of approaching, taking a picture. Uh, so I've come up with kind of a, um, I think a fun way to approach it. It's not a one that you uh, would probably expect that I would do. Um, but I'll start with the, my first question to people that I encounter in the photography world or just on the trails and they want to ask about, about photography and what, so I have a bunch of questions. What is an essential element that's free that we all use that's really easy, it's always here and you can't photograph without it um, and it doesn't cost anything. So what is that? And since I can't see your faces or hear your voices, I'll just answer the question. But of course, it's light. Light is the most basic photographic tool or element. Uh, it informs every picture. Uh, it could be midnight with a long exposure. It could be uh, first thing uh, every morning or evening, all day long. I mean, light is there. It's how you use it uh, that uh, really makes a big difference. So gaining a sensitivity to the qualities of light, um, early morning as is, is, uh, many photographers call it magic hour. Um, but it's, it's a delight to sort of begin to have this relationship with uh, uh, with light just becoming sensitive to its its uh, constant changes. So I thought I would uh, introduce us or reacquaint us to a couple of masters in the use of light. And I'm not going to show you photographs at first, but I'm going to show you some really famous uh, portraits and scenes by amazing painters. And the reason I wanted to show painters is because they're starting with a blank, blank canvas. And uh, you can see that the use, their use of light is pretty, pretty basic and not really all that interesting. Um, and you can see their use of landscape is pretty minimal. It was just to uh, inform the viewer about uh, the subject. 
the use of light is here. Um, uh, once again, just very plain, not very complicated. Uh, and it's, it's an absolutely gorgeous picture of this woman. Then let's advance by a hundred years and look at uh, Caravaggio's use of a chiaroscuro, uh, the incredible modeling of light on the faces and clothes in the room. It really gives the viewer uh, an incredible sense of depth and is in sharp contrast to the pictures we just looked at. Um, so it's the light becomes um, much more than uh, just light. It, it is, in fact, a compositional element. And we'll be talking about uh, composition as we go forward. But you can see in the, um, whoop, the light's going across the screen, uh, across the, uh, sorry, I grabbed my picture there, um, across the image that it directs your eyes, becomes part of the, um, the composition. The arm sort of linking into the face creates this circular uh, motif that really knits the whole picture together. So composition in photography is uh, using elements to help turn, if that's your desire, a 2D surface, that of a flat page, into a 3D experience. Um, and we'll talk about some other elements besides light that photographers can use to increase the effectiveness uh, of, of building a dimension dimensionality into their photographs. So a foreground element, middle ground, uh, the lines that um, roads create, and colors, another obviously a compositional element, but hot colors, reds, yellows, and so on, kind of come forward. Cool colors like blues and greens recede so the use of those colors is a very um, powerful, um, uh, a very powerful element. So this uh, Claude Lorraine Seaport at Sunset, 1639, is um, a, a classic example of using the, the uh, disappearing lines into infinity. Um, and you can see that he's really creating a sense of depth by these elements. Now, obviously, they are, I mean, he's in control, he's, he's, they're paintings, so he puts them all there. But if photographers can start, once they're aware, can start to think about using elements like that. So in this photograph that I took, um, sailing to Bermuda, Bermuda race, you can see all of the, um, the elements that, that make this picture work. And actually, if you look at the, the water that splashed on my lens, the lens and the water become part of the composition, something way in the foreground. Um, the lines of the boat going back, uh, creating a sense of uh, infinity. And this tiny little boat over here in the background all help uh, build this into, uh, you know, I think a pretty dynamic photograph. Here on Selden Creek, um, and we'll see this later as well, um, the lines uh, draw you back into the distance. Um, so it's another uh, compositional element. Um, once again, the colors, uh, the yellows and reds, kind of come forward and um, uh, really ground the tree. And in the mist, in the background, uh, the, the distance gets smaller and adds to the sense of depth. Same here, it's the same tree, different time of year, a different lighting situation, obviously. 
entirely different mood. Um, this is something that um, um, it's, it's another element of light and what kinds of mood that it creates and how you can use that to create uh, a message or a story. Um, so here, the early, early morning light is something um, that I'm always uh, uh, endeavoring to capture or late evening. Um, so uh, the light here, I mean, is an incredibly strong compositional element with the lines leading you back into the distance uh, and so on. Shadows are taking something that doesn't really exist. There is no line there. But shadows, uh, if you stop to think about it, are really just lines on the ground or uh, on a building or whatever. So in a uh, two-dimensional situation, they become very strong compositional elements. Uh, same thing with lines on the building. So uh, this leads us into uh, what I'm really excited about uh, is sharing with you the submissions for our contest or really our challenge uh, to um, sort of inspire all those uh, interested to get out and, and ch push themselves um, to uh, challenge themselves to make a better photograph and ex explore it just to get out and start to interact with other photographers and talk about their imagery. Um, so let's talk about um, first the photos of honorable mention and I think they're really spectacular. Uh, Rochelle Davis created this tulip tree portrait and it is totally awesome. Uh, it uses a lot of the elements that we've just talk, been talking about, the lines disappearing up to a vanishing point. Um, it has the fun of the, uh, the sunlight and the trees around. It's very, very strong photo, really excellent. Um, sunshine, sunshine Through the Birches by uh, Ellen Patasca is uh, just a very relaxed um, portrait of an afternoon. It reminds me a lot of the Lyme Impressionist painters. Uh, she has a nice, a very nice foreground element here, this little bush you don't really notice but it allows you to uh, go on down into the depth um, of the photograph. Um, Morning Frost by Marta Cohn. Um, this, I think Marta took this on a morning that we went out on one of our photography walks. Um, and uh, it's really very special. The, um, um, all of the branches were just glistening in the morning dew, it was pretty, pretty special. She did a great job capturing it. So our next category, photographs of distinction. Third place, uh, Selden Overlook, Colleen Dotham, um, is uh, surprisingly, uh, I say surprisingly, because it's a space that I go to uh, um, fairly frequently She's done a really great job of capturing it, uh, and giving a sense of uh, solidity uh, in the foreground, using the shadows, uh, and then looking beyond to Selden Island and uh, the rest of it. It's a very, very lovely photograph. Uh, in second place, Shadow Glory by Sarah uh, Preneus is a wonderful portrait of this dog. Um, Sarah's captured either on purpose, I'll choose to think it was on purpose, uh, it, but it's, it could have been just a happen, lucky ha happenstance with the path going uh, back into, leading you into the distance. 
this tree beautifully balancing uh, the dog, uh, and then the colors and the sunlight at special time of day as uh, the light begins to disappear. In our first place, Chimney Stack by Melissa uh, Zarkowski is a spectacular, very fun, totally whimsical uh, photograph of ice uh, just having frozen, I guess, overnight uh, and capturing a sense of uh, the little fractures in the ice, capturing the, the glistening of the sun, the sky, uh, creating this great whimsical portrait of, uh, of smoke coming out of a chimney, which is, of course, this log. So Melissa and all six of you, fantastic job. We're so excited that you uh, took part you know, in this adventure with us. We'd love to get your feedback, and um, we hope you'll continue on photographing. Send us your comments. Moving on, um, I thought I was asked if I would share some photographs of my own work, and um, I've done uh, extensive travel to most of the continents uh, of the world photographing. Still lots of places to go. But one place I went and had uh, just an amazing time to see, and amazing things to see, Southern Africa. Uh, we went to South Africa for about six days, then Namibia, and finally Botswana. Uh, it's just a very special, special time. So. So it's just as we thought I'd start off with uh, a map of the um, of the area. There you see the little uh, pins uh, showing where we started in the beginning. We're down in Cape Town, um, then went to Namibia and the Sassafle, and then over to Botswana. <laughs> let the music kind of carry us along. These uh, were going into Cape Town, quite an amazing uh, German influence and Dutch influence. in central Namibia. This is a dead lake.
called Sassoufle. These trees have been standing here for hundreds of years. It's an ancient, ancient, and captivating visual experience. Deserts swallowing up the mountains and the sand dunes stretching for miles and hundreds of miles all the way down to the ocean. It's typical to celebrate a balloon trip and landing with a little champagne. These are the weaver nests up in the trees. Hundreds of birds can live in those nests. You can count them. There are 11 zebra in the picture. There are a merry band of photographers. The desert I found initially to be off-putting, but I grew to love it. It's very intimate, totally different morning, noon, and night. So we left the desert and headed on north, east, up to Botswana. We encountered this very lovely, welcoming young, well, maybe not so welcoming. amazed we could get so close to the animals. In many cases, we were just 15, 20 feet away. This is a lodge that we uh, stayed in. Quite extraordinary. We had an encounter with wild dogs that were started to attack uh, baby elephants in, in part of the herd. And the elephants banded together in quite an extraordinary way, shoulder to shoulder, and charged the dogs. Pretty uh, breathtaking to see.
asking a great deal of nature photography is sort of spontaneously capturing what you see in front of you. Another part of photographing in nature is uh, using the elements that we've been talking about uh, of light uh, and composition of lines uh, to build stronger uh, compositions. So some of the photographs you just get, you're spontaneous, you get up early and you're there at the right time. Other parts are thinking about ahead of time where you want to be at what time of day and making sure you get there uh, and then working a particular situation so it becomes a uh, much more of a thought through process. Something like this, the road, the shadows, and so on, are all something I really worked on uh, in setting up the particular photograph. And silhouetting is a, another very strong compositional tool to bring attention to an activity, a person.
two and then flowing over Victoria Falls. So there we go. Um, I thought I would um, also uh, share with you uh, photography from Lyme, Connecticut. So taking all of the, uh, the, the sort of the crazy, wild, uh, foreign, uh, exotic uh, stuff away from my photography and just look at what we have around us uh, and, um, and note that it is equally as beautiful and um, uh, and exhilarating. So these are pictures I took primarily of the Connecticut River uh, or it's uh, the tide lands. Um, of the waters that start to flow from the uplands. This is the start of a two-year study of me heading out most Saturday mornings after driving up from New York and trekking off to find different fascinating and beautiful objects and scenes. from the hill looking over to Essex. I love trees. There's a certain majesty. But I think I ended it there to uh, keep our time under control. <laughs> so anyway, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I certainly enjoyed putting this together. Um, and I think um, Sue is rejoining us and uh, uh, we'd be happy to take pictures well, and take uh, questions from anybody about the pictures. <laughs> so Joe, I don't know if you were able to see the comments while you were, I don't know if you were able to multitask but no. uh, everybody was just over the moon about both of the shows that you did. They were, or the videos that you showed, they were just uh, truly magical. 
paired with the music too. It was pretty, uh, it was almost emotional. It was really great. Um, we did have a couple questions. Sarah wanted to, um, she was in, in reference to the South Africa photos, but probably photos in general. Uh, she says that your photos are amazing. How many of them do you take for every one that you keep? <laughs> That's not a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a motor drive on a, on a high-speed camera, uh, you end up taking a lot. But I, I'm actually pretty conservative. I, I might take, uh, I mean, I come back from a trip like uh, the one to South Africa with 8,000 pictures. Um, and you probably saw, um, you know, I don't know how many we saw, uh, 60 or so. So um, there's a, it's actually a great question because the process for me is working through uh, a situation. I'll always start, um, if I see something that I'm excited about, I'll grab that picture and then I'll try to work the scene. You know, I'll uh, move to the left, I'll move to the right, I'll walk in, I'll look for something higher up. Or, um, so it becomes part of a process. And at each point, I'm never going to go back there. Um, so I grab that particular picture and move on. So it's a lot of pictures, which really means a lot of editing. <laughs> Um, editing. Yeah, I, I'm trying to formulate a question about editing, but I don't have it yet. But Ellen would like to know, um, she says you did a, a wonderful job, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Any hints on how to get better photos using your iPhone? Absolutely. iPhones are great. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons that we structured our, um, our challenge uh, the way we did is so people with iPhones would feel totally comfortable and um, in to coming with us on our walks or just going off and using their iPhones. So iPhone is just a tool. Um, they're all just tools. So big expensive cameras, the iPhones, which are big expensive iPhones. Um, and the iPhones are getting better and better uh, in terms of image quality. But it's really how you use it. Um, and what you take, you know, some of our things that we've talked about either on our walks or this evening, about changing your position, uh, lowering your camera down to the ground, holding it above your head, um, trying to find a different, uh, a different perspective that might enhance whatever it is that caught your attention initially. So uh, with an iPhone, you can take lots and lots of photos too. So, <laughs> so you can join me in all your editing wo uh, woes. Um, but um, yeah, I would definitely. Um, and uh, my wife just uh, sent me a, a little text saying, don't forget Camera Plus. Uh, there are, Camera Plus is an app uh, that uh, puts you very much in charge of uh, aperture for shutter speed, um, ISO, things like that, that you normally don't get with the easy to use um, cameras um, or software. So another thing that I've just started using is, um, um, I wish I should have had it here. It's a, uh, it's a gimbal device. It's sort of a steady cam uh, that's very inexpensive, I find, anyway. Um, and it turns your, uh, it, it opens up a lot more possibilities for doing video, especially um, video with your iPhone. But it's, it's made specifically for the iPhone and it's, it's um, really fun to use. Um. Thank you. Um, I had a question about your South Africa photos because I felt like personally, as I was traveling through this 10, 12 minute video that you had composed, I felt like I was seeing scenes that would take a lifetime to capture that everything just seemed so perfect. And like the leopard sleeping in the tree and like the waterfall just at the right time of day. How, how long were you really in South Africa, because I got a sense that you were there for a few years <laughs> when I watched it. I was like, there's no way somebody could get this on in a couple weeks, all these 
amazing mm -hmm. scenes, but I mean, I guess that would speak to your talent. But how long were you yeah. there? Well, um, we were there uh, a little over two weeks. Maybe Clinton could pop up uh, the answer to that <laughs> text. Uh, yeah, uh, two to three weeks. Uh, we were constantly moving um, and uh, 18 days, she says. <laughs> <laughs> So the um, uh, or up early before dawn, and uh, I was really because uh, I, I took my kids with us. We took our kids with us. Um, they were up before we were, and we were up at you know four or five in the morning uh, with places to go and you know hours to to drive in a Land Rover or whatever. Um, we knew through you know, studying and research uh, that the, a lot of the places that we wanted to go specifically, um, and we just got ourselves there. So a lot of, uh, a lot of planning uh, and get up and go. So, and you were able to change your physical perspective as well. I know that some of the photos, you were in a hot air balloon. Were you also in a plane at one point? I thought I saw a plane. Well, we, um, Yes, uh, we were in a hot air balloon was part of the Namibia experience up in the desert, uh, flying over Sassafle, which is the, the, where the dunes make those magical shapes. Uh, and the, those shapes stay there. I've seen photographs of similar things from years earlier and the, the, the same curves are still are there. They seem to be uh, um, molded into the rocks. And then we, uh, we were had flown into a very remote lodge in Namibia, in actually an area um, called uh, the Dark Sky Country, or Dark Sky Preserve. Uh, there are no lights uh, allowed at night, or they have to be very special uh, lights aimed down at the ground. And we stayed at uh, where we stayed had a uh, quite an amazing telescope. Um, so it's a, a world-renowned area for looking at the sky. Uh, so we flew in there, and then we flew out to um, Win Windhoek, which is the capital, and then the next day on to uh, Botswana. So actually, we went to Botswana by car. It was kind of that was quite the trip. <laughs> so did you carry more baggage with your clothes or more baggage with your camera equipment? <laughs> Well, <laughs> as I get older, my camera equipment gets lighter and lighter. So, <laughs> so no, the I, I try to pack uh, uh, pretty lightly um, with with camera gear, a couple of bodies, and three or four lenses. And I, I'm not carrying. I'm not a bird photographer, so I don't have these mammoth heavy. Um, you know, telescopic lenses. But uh, a lot of the things that you saw were just photographed with a maybe a uh, 150, maybe a 200 millimeter lens. Um, the leopards were shot with uh, um, just a one, well, I think a 105. Wow. Uh, we were very close, um, which amazed me <laughs> that somebody didn't decide they wanted to make hamburger out of uh, Joe photographer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I don't have any more questions in the chat box, but um, I, I will open it up if anybody wants to uh, unmute and ask Joe a question directly. We can try that out. Another thing we can do is I can share Joe's email address uh, with everybody. Um, I can do a follow up email after this meeting um with information on a show that joe is has upcoming that he did not talk about but it's upcoming and i'm sure you would all be interested in seeing it. i believe it's in massachusetts uh it's no it's at the the i'm sorry you did ask me to talk about it i'm very, I'm very excited about it it's um at the benton museum okay. in uh, stores connecticut um there are thirty-five thousand kids that are there so they're i'll have an audience of Everybody has to walk by it. I think that's my largest attendance at any show. Uh, the show is going to be outside as well as in the museum, and it's all dealing with immigration. It's my show, We Are a Nation of Immigrants. And um, it opens 
July, uh, June 1st, um, but the that's kind of a soft opening. The real opening will be in um, mid-August when the kids come back from school and we can sort of have a, uh, a celebration. Okay. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so I will send everybody in the meeting, I will send everyone an email with more details about Joe's uh, show coming up at the Benton, um, along with contact information for him in case anybody would like to um, send a direct email or message to him. I'd also like to um, let everybody know that uh, we have a web page for Imagining Lyme if you haven't checked it out um, yet. It is imagininglyme.org. Um, you can see all of the photos that were submitted for um, this past series, and you can learn about uh, the next challenge that's coming up, which will be composition. Um, also, um, Joe is going to be leading a walk. Someone had asked about uh, if we can do a walk. I think it was Ann, uh, Ann West, yes, who missed part of the presentation today, but wants to know if it was possible to join you on, on one of your walks. And he is doing a walk with us on May 1st at, I believe, 8.30 a.m. Uh, I don't have further details on, on location. Joe, do you know where it is? Um, nope. <laughs> Okay, well, um, likely that information just... will also be on our webpage and I will include that information on the email that I um, send out to everybody. And- um, I saw a question Terry, from, yeah, from Terry Clee. Yeah, she wanted uh, to know if you're, um, we, we're a Nation of Immigrants show, is that the same one that's in New Haven? The, the show at the Benton will actually be two different shows, uh, one from, the new London show that eyes portraits and the other one uh, from definitely from New Haven uh, without the the huge banners. Uh, they seem to be sensitive about screwing into the buildings. I don't quite know why. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so if there are no other questions or concerns or complaints, <laughs> Anybody? Um, everybody says uh, thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation, Joe. Thank you so much for your time uh, and sharing your photography with us. Well, and thank you and thank the Land Trust. All you guys do is so amazing. You guys walk around the trails. It's the trails are so amazing. It's because of people like Sue and her husband and thirty or forty other volunteers that get out there. We all work as a team. We couldn't do it without you either. Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs>